Perhaps the most fundamental statement of Christian faith is that God died and came back to life in order to redeem us. And it is a scandalous and controversial truth that prompts a response from everyone who encounters it. There's a story in the Gospels of a woman from Bethany named Mary who has something to teach us about how we ought to respond to this news. And that's what we're talking about this week. Kindred UMC live show features adults discussing adult topics, occasionally with adult language. It may not be suitable for young viewers. Please use discretion before watching. Hello all, welcome once again to the Kindred UMC pre-recorded live show, coming to you not live, but pre-recorded from my front room, AKA Kindred Studio A. My name is Chris Hayden. I am the pastor of Kindred UMC. I'm Hannah. I'm here. Fact. True. <laughs> I'm Taylor, and I just got a new car. Woo! 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 And I got to drive it today. <laughs> it did cost great physical, great uh, physical pain, but yeah, I'm yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, but here you are, Maybe and you have a new car and uh, an SUV esque hatchbacky. Heck yeah! Yeah. Which I miss. I I drive a, a coupe, or no, not a coupe, a sedan. Yeah. Ugh. I drive a sedan. And she was like, I do not want a sedan under no circumstances. Like do a I want forty a year old man, I drive a sedan. <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> I was like, no, like I'm an SUV girly. Like I'll never not drive an SUV again. And then when she got it, I was like the trunk space. And there's my, so many cup holders. My wife has a, an SUV. Yeah. So that's how I get away with it. Yeah. Uh, true. We need, when we need to, we borrow, I borrow her car. Yeah. Or I make her drive to it. Uh, so we are continuing our series. I'm calling Barbies in the Bible, where we are looking at uh, female, significant female characters. I was saying heroines, but we did look at a villain uh, one time. And uh, but we are back to heroes, and we are. My my whole thrust is people who have been brought up in the church and who have encountered Christianity. There is the idea out there that the Bible is a patriarchal, misogynistic document. And I'm trying to make the case that while there are certainly examples of that, overall, if you interpret the Bible in the way that it should be, uh, you will find that it's actually a pretty uh, egalitarian feminist document that actually moves people from kind of that violent, misogynistic, patriarchic idea into a more, <clears throat> a, a more just, a more egalitarian, like if you really track what is going on in the scriptures, that's what's actually happening. So uh, we are looking at Mary of Bethany. So we've finally come out of the Old Testament and we're into the New Testament. We're into the Jesus-y times. <laughs> um, and uh, so first of all, because there's like a bunch of Marys. Yeah. Do you know who Mary of Bethany is? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I like the name Bethany. Not even a little bit. Yeah, well, but so Bethany, I, it's it's old-timey names, so of Bethany means the Mary from Bethany. Yeah. So, like, man, if somebody has a kid before you and they name it the name you wanted to name your kid, sorry. Oops. You can't have two Marys of Bethany. Uh, you could have Mary 2, Mary, Mary 3. Mary Jr. of Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> So we are looking at Mary of Bethany. She is not one, she's not Mary, the mother of Jesus. And two, she's not Mary Magdalene. Although we're gonna talk about Mary Magdalene. I, I left Mary, the mother of Jesus off of this list because we're, by the time we get to her, we'll already be in Advent and we're gonna talk about her then anyway. Yeah, so that makes sense. She ab absolutely belongs in this. Uh, and like, we I, already I, know she's a hero. Right, I mean like she actually, <laughs> she, I'm not Catholic or anything, but I actually think her story arc and her, like the way she responds, we'll, we'll talk about <laughs> We're gonna talk, be on the lookout for the Mary mother of Jesus. Long uh, story Advent. short. She a baddie. Yeah, she got. <laughs> she's got. She's got the every every analogy I can think of is testicle related. <laughs> like she's got the nuts, man. She's got. I them. mean, like, figuratively, she does. Yeah, she's. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah. She said, like, "Okay, it's fine. I'll go. You I'll could argue. Go on in that barn and have myself a baby all by myself." Yeah, no. The story Queen. of Mary is actually, if you really look at it, do you she's, think that's how she talked? Yeah. Uh, no, that's just how I talk when I get excited. Thank you. Thank you for the shame. Uh, but we are looking at Mary of Bethany, 
Uh, she is, she's actually in a couple of different stories and she is in all four gospels. So there's, there's this one story that occurs in every gospel. Uh, and it is essentially, it's rooted in the idea that Mary anoints Jesus before he dies. But there are varying details that differ in all of the four gospels. So... Once again, I'm forced to make the point, <clears throat> if you interpret scripture literally, then you, you have to believe that Mary of, uh, of Bethany anointed Jesus four different times. Oh, good catch. Good catch. I got some uh, water on my leg, but we're good. We're okay. <laughs> uh, that you have to believe that Mary of, of Bethany anointed Jesus four different times. <laughs> And all of them are different, and none of the gospel writers decided to mention that, oh, by the way, this is the second time she anointed him. Like, like it's just, you'd have to bend over backwards logically to, no, this is one event that happened, but the historiosity of it uh, is not the point. The point is the, the theology and the lesson behind it. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So uh, since there are four accounts of this, and also there's another where Mary and Martha are, anyway, <laughs> there's a lot of Mary of Bethany. So we're going to focus on the story that's found in Mark, which is, even though it's the second gospel in the Bible, it's actually the first gospel that was written. So it's the it's the most primary source that we have that's in, in canon. Um, and Mark... Before we read the text, Mark likes to do this literary structure thing where he couches one story in the middle of a different story. So he'll kind of start telling a story and then he'll go and then he'll kind of like stop in the in the middle of that. And then he'll start telling another story. And you're like, what the what, but what happened to the Pharisees that you were talking about? And then he'll end that story and then he'll go on and he'll return to the original story and be like, and that's why. We don't ever do that. You know, like, and so he likes to couch stories and stories, and that's yeah. what we have here. Okay. So this is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter. I still haven't mastered the uh, reading the Bible with the handheld microphone yet. Do you want me to? I would, except I want what I really want, because I, I have different EQs and things. Because oh. male voices tend to be different from female voices generally. Um, so this is Mark chapter 14 verses one through 11, and you'll hear the, like, we're going to start in one story and move into another story, and then we're going to return to that original story. So here we go. <clears throat> it was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes, those are the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They're the guys that don't like Jesus and that Jesus insults and makes fun of in public all the time uh, because they're idiots and they don't and they're selfish and they're evil. Uh, so uh, the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said not during the festival or there will be a riot among the people. So they don't want to kill Jesus in public because the public would riot. Right. Uh, so that's the beginning of the first story. And now we're going to change gears. Mm -hmm. Verse three. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke it. Up, uh, she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, "Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii." By the way, that's like a year's wage. So we're talking like forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of oil by today's standards. Uh, Three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor, and they scolded her. But Jesus said, "Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you." Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Now we're going to return back to the original story. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priest in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, 
They were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him, him being Jesus. <clears throat> so, first of all, let's separate the two stories. So what's the first story? Priests and the scribes. Wanted to kill Jesus, but they couldn't do it in public because, you know. Right. Yeah. And then the second story is the, the woman we're talking about, Mary. What, and so what is Mary, what is Mary doing in this story? She anointed him with the oil. Yeah. And what kind of oil? You don't have to be specific. I don't just... know. Holy oil. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the specifics are it's it's an alabaster jar of oil of nard. Uh, but the most important detail in the story is what do people get upset with her about? It was like super valuable. Yeah. It's like a, it's a year's wages worth of oil. And she breaks it and anoints him. And then how do, how do we end the first story after that one happens? Was it one of the people that were mad about the oil that was like, fine, I'll betray him? Yeah, yeah, presumably. Judas would have been what would one have been the, there and would have been one of the people. And in fact, in other gospels, it specifically says that Judas Judas is the one who's like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> like, and uh, I think it's John's gospel, maybe Luke. But he even explains, he goes even further to say that, yeah, that's because Judas was in charge of the money. Mm-hmm. And he was like, don't waste that. I want to be, I, give me that money. Yeah. You know? And Judas stayed mad. Oh, he, yeah, he, he turns out to be the bad guy. Yeah, Judas what? was mad all the time. Anybody who likes vampires, shout out to Halloween times. I didn't have a Halloween shirt. Um, but yeah, Judas Judas is the literal, the origin story of Dracula. That's how important Judas is. I did not know that. Ma- oh, yeah. I had no idea. I mean, that's why. Maybe we'll, I mean, that's a whole nother episode. Yeah. Really. <laughs> we mean, could do a spooky I mean, it's not, episode. It's, yeah, it's not canon. It's not like Christian Gothic yeah. canon. It's yeah, just, but it is Bram Stoker's Dracula was originally Judas of Iscariot. I love that. Yeah, it's, that's it's a fun really, little tidbit. Yeah, yeah. So. I foresee a spooky episode coming through. Yeah. And uh, you know I Halloween, love me some vampires. Man. Spooky Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it is almost Friday the 13th. <clears throat> oh, in October. No, nonetheless. I know. Yeah. yeah. Tattoos uh, are going to be super uh, cheap. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the most important part right there. Uh, so, okay. So we have, uh, again, this bookended story. And we have this example of this woman who... Uh, all right. here Here's the context that I think makes this important. Jesus. So this is the last week before Jesus is executed. So that, so the time is pivotal, right? Jesus has literally been announcing to everyone and to his disciples, to the, to the crowds that gather, he has been announcing, yes, I'm going to Jerusalem. They're going to arrest me. They're going to crucify me. And then I'm going to raise from the dead. Like he's been saying it overtly, like literally to their face. Like, Do we know how he happen. knew? Well, I mean, it just now. I mean, like he's the son of God. Yeah, what you're left to believe. Right, right, right. okay. Uh, but like, no, no, no. They're, he's just saying, like, hey, man, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And all the disciples are like, yeah, cool. Um, so <laughs> and like they just kind of gloss over it because. They think that Jesus is going to be a military, like revolutionary figure who's going to overthrow Caesar. They, like they're focused on the political power. Mm-hmm. But he keeps on saying like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be crucified by Rome. Like he keeps being very explicit. And, and nobody can really do anything about mm-hmm. it. Now, what does Mary do in response to this news? She anoints his body. And how does Jesus describe that anointing? He uses a, a very specific He's like, specific he phrase. anointed me, she anointed me before my death. Right. She's the only one that will swallow the hard pill. She's the only one that will face death in its yeah. face. She's the only one who's like, well, if my Lord is going to die, then we might as well, like, then let's, it. let's. Let's prepare it. Yeah. Let's pour out everything we've got because it, we won't, because he's going to die. She's the only one who's listening to him. Yeah. Like, she's the only disciple who's actually paying attention to what he's saying. Now, in literary forms, there is something called a contrast. And it's when a writer puts two kind of like very similar responses, but they differ. Right. So we're asked, I think, by this writer to compare and contrast 
Mary's response. Yeah, she's like, I'll anoint you before death. And then other everybody else is like, sure, I'll go and I'll betray him. It's fine. Yeah. He's going to die anyway. Judas. Yeah. Judas is like, I didn't sign up for a loser. <laughs> you know, like you're going to go be arrested. Like, so no thanks. <laughs> I might as well order or, or a profit off, yeah. off of this. He's like, I'm going to be on the winning side. Yeah. And so the writer <laughs> seems to be like putting these two characters together on purpose. And obviously... Mary of Bethany is the one that we are supposed to follow after. Right. So it it begs the question. So um, you won't have heard this, but I will have opened the video right. with a question that is essentially um, the, the root of Christian faith. The very, very heart of it is God died to redeem us right. and then defeated death by resurrecting. It's an outlandish claim. It is a ridiculous thing to claim. And it prompts a response from all of us. And we hear in this story two different responses. One is uh, BS, because I can't say the words that... <laughs> One is BS, I don't buy it. And the other is, fair enough, I'll go where you lead. So... Have you ever had it's the a Gilmore Girls theme song in real time? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I never got into Gilmore Girls. Oh my god! I know. Chris. My, uh, Francisca did. My wife did. Yeah. But uh, I've heard good things. It's my favorite. I rewatch it every fall. <laughs> I think Joss Wheaton, who whom I I loved as a writer for Firefly and a lot oh. of his Marvel stuff, I think he was like a huge fan of Gilmore Girls. That, that was, I was like, oh, that's me. not just a. It's phenomenal. Oh, it's, it's so not just good. a girly show. No, nope. it's about yeah. the family ties and loving. Oh. I love it. It's also, from what I've seen, very quick and very witty. Oh, so much wit. Like, and they, a lot they of talk so fast. It reminds me of Aaron Sorkin, like West Wing. And, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. That's why we should listen to women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of the many reasons. Um, Barbie's in the Bible. Barbie's in the Bible. So, um, so, all right. L- let me propose this idea. A lot of Christianity, in my view presents this concept of when bad things happen, that's not God, that's the devil, or that's your doubt, or that's what, you know, and if you're ever feeling bad, then that's because you're not having enough faith. Mm-hmm. Can concur. Yeah. Well, yeah so that's like, how I so grew let up. So <laughs> let me pause there and just get your reaction. Like, have you heard that? Have you encountered that? What are your, uh, what's your opinion of that? She very much comes from learning of, you just have to be positive. If you're and not you just negative, have to pray good more. things will happen. The what? negativity makes you sick. The negativity makes your so blah, blah, blah. And, and I don't want to presume, but I it feels like there's a negative reaction to that type of theology. Can you talk a little bit more about how that, like what you feel about that and what's I going on I think that it comes from the people that I grew up with not knowing mental illness was real. Yeah. Because that was very much my case. Was I was like, no, there's something actually wrong with me. And like, I can't just pray it away. Yeah, you can't and then, pray away brain chemistry. Right. And then once I got diagnosed and once I got on meds and what I once I like started doing all this research and therapy and blah, 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 blah. My family and my people I grew up with kind of started to realize that like, no, this isn't something that like she's doing to herself or not necessarily that I was doing it to myself in a negative way, but just kind of like I was overthinking or whatever. Um but now, now that we're here, I still get a lot of the like, you just have to pray it away. But it's like, also I have to take my meds and I have to like attend therapy and I yeah. have to like do something good for myself every now and then to make sure that I like feel okay enough to be alive. So I have a I have a big problem when people tell me just to pray it away because also like I tried to pray the gay away and that obviously didn't work. So, <laughs> so um, thank so. God for that. <laughs> well, okay. So you say that. Um, I don't think those two, two ideas are categorically different. They're yeah, not. I agree. Not I, at all. I think they're relate, and mm-hmm. and also in the same way that so correlation is not causation, but there's a strong correlation between uh, people who are struggling with coming out in whatever way because there's a mm-hmm. there's a thousand different ways to come out. I know? mean, I had to come out as mentally ill at one point. So R- right, like, like, and that's what I mean. Like, because I, I don't, I don't I had want- to come out as a liberal at another point too. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, Dad. Uh, I've been down that. Road. <laughs> I've been I've been down that road on both sides. I've had I've had to come out. I'm I'm not conservative, but I've had to come out conservative on certain issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and been very much demonized. Also, <laughs> there too, like both sides. Both sides are just like 
Man, we really love to categorize and judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are addicted to it. Yeah. But like people are people and they're going to have feelings you heard positive it here. and negative. <laughs> so, so mean to me. <laughs> uh, so, so I think this conversation is ultimately at the heart of this story. Yeah. So Mary of Bethany... She doesn't shy away from the the horrifying truth of Mm -hmm. reality. Like, she doesn't shy away. She knows that before resurrection, there has to be death. And so let's anoint the body. Let's go ahead. Like, and and so there's this phrase that I use all the time when I talk about, uh, I like to swallow the frog first. And it's like, (laughs) yeah, right. Let me explain. (laughs) Taylor's terrified of frogs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you have a bunch of things that you have to do, and we all do, like that's not, that's life, you know. I prefer to tackle the hardest, most hard part first. Mm-hmm. Oh, Swallow yeah. You the eat the vegetables per- before you get to the fun food. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like it's it's kind of like the save dessert for last kind of mentality, mm-hmm. you know. But it like, but and it's a phrase I heard. Swallow the frog first. Yeah. And um, and that's kind of what this is. It's like Bethany's kind of going like, all right, then then let's go ahead and eat that frog. Like, let's not shy. Like, let's take Jesus at his word. And so she's demonstrating actual faith because she's willing to follow God into the darkness. Right. You know, and, and I think that is a metaphor for so much of like the Christianese mentality and the churchy in a negative way there, there are certainly healthy churches out there i'm not i don't mean to absolutely cast a broad like spectrum of, but but most of the western christianity that i've experienced kind of comes with some dose of why don't you just get positive and i'm like but there yep. is no positive without negative like right. there is no day without night you don't know good things if all your life is is good things and true actual healing so and and this comes from oh i've worked with a lot of people who have histories of trauma in various different ways real healing comes from stop ignoring what happened Mm -hmm. let's go ahead and you know certainly within the context of safe relationships and safe communities, which is what the church was intended to be in the first place. What? It's supposed to be a safe uh, space? All of a sudden it turned into this demonic kind of judgmental... uh, uh, Yeah. (laughs) Like... But the Chris church, is flustered. Yeah, well, <laughs> the church community He's is like it should be happy. <laughs> it, it should be safe. Yeah, you know it should it should be a community of love and grace. Certainly justice, absolutely justice, and certainly holding the people accountable. But the people who are being held accountable should be loved and and show through the grace process in the relationship. Yeah, I and literally like, was just explaining this to my grandma yesterday. Because my grandma is floored by the idea that people throw out their kids for being gay or don't believe in mental illness or whatever. Like, she's floored. She does not get it. It baffles her every single every, time. And it doesn't matter every single time I say it to her. She is floored every single time. And I had to look at her yesterday and be like, you can watch the she game actually stop start. moving in Hannah her head. was like, you're the exception, not the rule yeah. when it comes it, to Christians yeah. believing it, it is, anything it different than what practice, it said. It is unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. But it, she is baffled every single time. And I had to, I literally have had to look at her on multiple occasions and be like, you are the way it's supposed to be, not the way it is. Now, and thank God, a lot of the stories that I've heard yes. from people who have been outcast. And outcast for anything, honestly. Their their family eventually come, a mm-hmm. lot of them, not all of them. Some people are really stubborn yeah. and yeah. can't. Yeah, but some of their, like a, a lot of the stories that I've heard from folks, mm-hmm. especially LGBTQ, the a lot of their family eventually is like oh i get it yeah Yeah. like they and and like god bless people who change their minds yeah jeezy crazy man people refuse to change their minds i Um, change my mind all the time yeah i just don't know i don't understand how (laughs) you don't change your mind when you learn new information like that's the whole point of learning everything you know (laughs) like you like you, you meet new people and you're like oh that's a very different kind of person I did not know that kind of person existed. Yeah, and, and instead of except like embracing that and like learning things from people, people get scared and they. Yeah, yeah, it's fear versus curiosity. Yeah, you know, fear versus curiosity. Engage your curiosity. 
So, so get again, curious, guys. Oh yeah, it is. It's tattooed <laughs> it's on, on my hand. hand. Oh yeah, it says "get curious." That's right. Yep. we've talked about this <laughs> from my therapist. Yeah, everyone, be, like, shout out to you, bestie. Curiosity. Thanks, girl. Yeah. <laughs> like it's the best way towards empathy, which is, by the way, I think the primary attribute of Jesus Christ. So yes, if we're going to be following 100%. Jesus. Then we definitely need to be flexing that muscle as often as possible. And I think the easiest, quickest way to empathy is curiosity. Mm-hmm. Like, be curious. So and and so here we have Bethany, who's she's not afraid, she's not scared of what's going to come because she trusts that Jesus actually is telling the truth and that He knows what He's doing. Yeah, because everybody else is just being avoidant. Yeah, they're scared that He doesn't know what He's doing. Yeah, they're scared. They're following Him, but they're afraid of Him, and they're afraid that He's not what He says He is. And Mary of Bethany is one of the few people who, right up until His death, and and by the way. Later in the gospel, she's the one who's like, who like goes to anoint his body after he's crucified. Like she, like, like there, there's a parallel here. She's anointing his body beforehand and she goes to anoint his body later. And like, and, and that's when she discovers the resurrection. And like, that's, that's the other part of the story is like, if you follow God into the darkness, then you get to participate in the resurrection. And that's not just like the story of what happened. That's also a metaphor for actually faith, like how faith actually works. When we follow God into our depression, our trauma, our past abuse, our insecurity, our you name it, you name the darkness in your life, follow God into it. Don't avoid it. Don't don't take this ridiculous Christianese advice about like, anytime you feel that way, you're sinful. That's wrong. That, that is sinful. No, follow God there. When you go there, you can discover the gospel truth. Light can become dark. Grief can become joy. Abuse can become uh, like health and mental health and, and, and wholeness. And life can become death. Like that's the message. And that's, that's Mary is the personification of that. Mm-hmm. Like that's the idea she represents. So I'm sure we've gone on long. I always do. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Um, Amen. 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 Ah, woman.